Do you want to know the secrets to shooting great video on your mobile device? Well, our guest today is going to share with you a mobile video workflow so tight that even a rock star's pants would be totally jealous. Stay tuned. It's the Business of Video podcast. You're listening to the Business of Video podcast, where the world's top YouTubers and marketers talk about what's working with online video. This podcast is recorded live on Facebook every week, and you can join us when you visit businessofvideopodcast.com. Now your host, Owen Video. Good morning, everyone out there in internet land, and welcome back to the Business of Video podcast, America's number one podcast that is broadcast from my office. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I'm Owen Video, your coach for the business and marketing of online video. And you can check out what I do at thevideospot.net. But today, folks, it's not about me. It really isn't. It is not about me and the joy that I bring to children everywhere. Today, I want to introduce you guys my amazing co-host and world famous YouTuber, the infamous Nick Nimmin. Wow, the infamous? Infamous? Nick, it's good to see you today, buddy. How are you? I'm going fantastic, Owen. And, and let me tell you something. You, you, With that intro that you gave about bringing joy to children everywhere, I'm thinking Santa Claus. I mean, I know Christmas is coming, but it's not even Thanksgiving yet. I mean, technically, we're right on the cusp, but it's not even Thanksgiving yet, and you're already, and you're already putting out these Santa Claus things out there. I mean, you got to hold that off at least for a day. I know, right? It's it's uh it's it's it was either uh Santa Claus or Kevin Spacey. I don't know if that's appropriate. I don't Santa know if Claus that's for the win. Santa Claus <laughs> for the win. Oh my goodness gracious. That reminds me. Yikes. Nick, what have you been up to? I've just been hanging out, man. I've been uh, over here. I didn't even realize that it was actually Thanksgiving until you mentioned that uh, pre-call because I'm kind of removed from a lot of that over here. Um, I mean, of course, it's all over the Internet, but I've been busy lately, so I haven't been too, you know, entrenched into, you know, going through Facebook feeds and all that stuff. So uh, been a little bit removed from that. So I am happy, though, that uh, Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and I am now stuck in a position that I have to have that obligatory dinner um, tomorrow somewhere. We want to give a big shout out to our sponsor today, and we're going to do that right now. The show today is brought to you by the Video Marketing Toolkit, essentially the business owner's guide to video on the internet. Get my free scripts, tricks, templates, an interview guide, how to set your office up as a background. The toolkit is free. You can go to the videospot.net slash toolkit or click on the link in the description box and download the toolkit today. Now, we're going to get started in just a minute. But first, we like to do a little segment that we call the Sheriff Fire. Now, the Share a Fire section of our show, and I can see George dancing in the lobby. is pretty awesome. The Share a Fire section of the show is where we find a member of our audience that has shared this video on their Facebook or their YouTube newsfeed. And we just want to give a big shout out today because it's the day before Thanksgiving. We want to give a big shout out today to five Share a Fires. These are five people. We had 22 shares last week. Five of them we want to recognize today. So we're going to go just give a shout out to a couple different people. First, I want to give a big shout out to Jason Jackson, who shared our show last week. I want to give a big shout out to Mwangi Patrick, who shared our show last week. A huge high five to Luis LeBron. Look at that beautiful picture, guys. Oh, that is just, it's just lovely. I love it. I want to give a big shout out to my big Fan and friend, Ross Brand, who shared our show last week. Jerry Livingston, who shared our show last week. And finally, Valerie Fain, who shared our show last week. And I love this image. I love the kids 
in the butterfly, the butterfly. It reminds me of that song, Butterfly Kisses. Do you know that song, Nick? The song they play at every wedding? Yeah, you know, um, I I know that I do, but for whatever reason, like the melody and the whole thing, it just is not coming into my head right now. But yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that I do. I'm, I'm going to sing it for you when we're off the show. I'm going to. Okay. Uh, I was actually trying to lead you into singing it right now, but it didn't work. Butterfly kisses. All right, I got it. Yeah. Uh, I've been to like a thousand <laughs> weddings, and this is what they play. I used to be a wedding photographer, folks, just, just like every other videographer out there. But we want to say thank you to Jason, Mwangi, Luis, Ross, Jerry, and Valerie, and the 17 others who shared our show last week on Facebook. And remember, each week we select a member of our audience who shared this show on Facebook or Twitter. And if you want to get a shout out on our next show, then share this video on your timeline right now. Click the share button. Tell your friends to tune in live. And our fantastic producer, Melissa Media, will pick one lucky share of fire to sponsor next week's show and get a huge shout out because this show is all about you. Hey, Nick, did you uh, hear the news? Uh, Facebook has launched a brand new creator app, and I have to admit this thing is pretty cool. In their latest effort to take creators from YouTube, Facebook has launched a brand new creator app with new community tools and a playbook for dominating Facebook video. This has been sort of like the big news that is all over the web right now. Uh, Nick, have you had a chance to uh, to play with this creator app at all? Yep, absolutely. Oh, like yeah, yeah, I've got it. I've got it in there, but I, I haven't taken it really for a spin yet. I put it in there yesterday. And, um, you know, this actually the timing for this is fantastic because um, 2018, you know, as as regular listeners might know, um, 20 or, or, you know, YouTube is my thing. Um, Facebook yeah. needs to be my thing, you know, in addition to YouTube. Um, so because of that, the timing for this is fantastic because 2018 is going to be a big push into Facebook for me. So, yeah. you know, having something like this is going to be a, uh, uh, a bonus asset for doing that. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you know what I've got to tell you so far, you know, Facebook has this habit of launching apps and launching, uh, um, you, you know, new features before they're really fully developed yet and i think that they do this to kind of you know get some excitement going it's actually it's a, it's it's really a revolutionary way to launch things i haven't always appreciated it because you go into these apps and it's like wait a minute this is the same dang thing as the as the pages app but the the youtube creator app really has some amazing features in it and our good friend jeff c who we had on the show recently and uh, Stephanie Liu, who we've had on the show in the past, they've done some reviews on their channels. We'll try to post some of those links in the description box below. We're down a uh, a producer today. But, you know, the, the big things that they have here, and this is for all of you guys out there listening today, the big, big advantages of the Facebook Creator app, I think, is that, number one, they give you this uh, a, a live video frame. So when you do live video from your mobile device, you can actually add a, a branded frame around the image. Plus, get this, Nick, it has the ability to preload a video pre-roll before you go live. So before you go live from your mobile phone, you can add a pre-roll that, that plays, you know, um, uh, a video, a video sequence. So I, you know, nice. I, I got it. That's in my book. That's a pretty, that's a pretty neat thing. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you can you can create like a whole little intro for it. I mean, a whole little branded uh, a whole little branded thing. Wheels are spinning. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's fantastic. You know what's really interesting is that our good friend Ross Brand uh, he had uh, reached out to me this week and he said, "Hey, Owen, what are your predictions for uh, uh, 2018 in live streaming?" And this was probably like a week ago. So I said, "Oh, well, I'll tell you. The big thing that we're going to see is we're going to see pre-roll being added into some of these apps." like Switcher Studio, uh, Periscope. They're going to add these things in, and not not three days later uh, does Facebook launch exactly that app. So I'm telling you, you guys want, you guys want the, straight, the straight stuff. 
you got to tune into the Business of Video podcast because we are on top of the latest trends. In fact, we were a year early with the Snapchat thing, as Nick mentioned early. So it's earlier. So uh, Anna, so, hey, Anna, you at least got to buy. You at least got to buy a few days here with the, uh, you know, with their prediction there with uh, with Ross. I know. It's, we're getting better. I'm getting better at it. I think is is really the big thing. Anna yeah. Dinosprio is asking, is that like B roll or an intro? It's like a branded opening bumper, you know. So you can technically important. do anything you want with it, right? True. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, you could you could add some B-roll stuff there. You could add a branded bumper there. You could just add, you know, like a like a cool little, you know, graphic motion thing saying it's getting ready to start. I mean, technically, you could do anything you wanted, right? You really could. Yeah, you know, that's actually a great idea, Nick. You could you could ask like a a replay question, right? My my new friend Billy Funk, Funk it up, buddy, is doing this thing where he opens up every video. Uh, every live stream with a uh, a replay viewer question, right? So it's like, hey, if you're watching the replay, here's your question. You could open up with that to just get instant engagement uh, on, on the app. Some really cool things. Here's the wrap-up, guys. The app is definitely not ready for prime time yet, even, but even the basic features demonstrate where Facebook is headed. The new tools will definitely improve your live stream production value and make it easier to engage with your audience. It's so much easier, for example, to access my my business page, Facebook Messenger, which is awesome. This is a must have app for seriously creator for serious creators. So be sure to tune into my channel on YouTube next week as we post video tutorials on how to get started. And that's the news. Hey, we have a great show today. We have a great show today. He's he's drying his eyes right now uh, because Butterfly Kisses makes him cry just a little bit. We're getting a lot of comments to Butterfly Kisses, by the way. I think that's uh, that's a good that's a good place to be. Uh, we have a great show today. Our our guest today is someone who I just think just crushes it in the video marketing realm. Plus, he's doing work in a field that absolutely needs uh, innovative thinkers like him. So I want to welcome to the show George B. Thomas. He is a recovering youth pastor and former pub bouncer. That's a killer comment there, folks. George B. Thomas has always been a helper of people. It's just been at different points in their journey. Now, George is the resident nerd at the saleslion.com, an inbound and content marketing agency helping businesses become rock stars in their markets. George sees video as the next step in the inbound marketing evolution and loves to help businesses by running one and two day workshops. George B. Thomas, welcome to the show, my man. Well, thank you. Thank you, Owen and Nick. This is awesome to be here. I'll tell you, I, I tried to put on the right glasses as you were like saying the thing. So like nerd and rock star. And I'll tell you guys, you have set the bar high today. Like, I mean, the fact that we have Bruce Lee, butterfly kisses, the word obligatory, and that I am supposedly creative and humble, like, jeesh. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's going to be one of those. Yeah, don't it's that show. <laughs> don't accuse us of telling the truth, but we do like to have fun. We yes, do like yes. to have fun. Yes. Hey, George, for those in our audience that is not familiar with your work, tell us a, a little bit about what you do at the Sales Lion. Yeah, absolutely. So my claim to fame is really being nerdy with marketing automation. I am a HubSpot accredited trainer. Uh, what that means is I have 15 of their 16 certifications. But about two years ago, we knew that video was going to be huge. We took a hard right turn into video. And so I started diving deep into that uh, mobile editing, creative and so now really what I do a lot of is I go out to different businesses and we teach video workshops, how to be good in front of the camera, how to be good behind the camera, and really how can you get your sales team, marketing teams, C-level people to not be like ah, a nervous wreck when they get in front of that camera. Oh, that I tell you, that is such a, a big deal. Uh, you know, I'm screaming that from the rooftops is uh, the C-level execs are, I, I think, are some of the <laughs> hardest 
uh, hardest people to convince because they want they want everything to be perfect, right? Have you run into that, George B. Thomas? Oh, absolutely. So many companies, Owen and Nick, are paralyzed by perfection, and they can't Ooh. just get out of their own way and actually hit that publish button and realize the five, the 50, the 5,000 that will watch that where there might be what they would call not perfect, look at it and say, oh, but that's human. And all of us are really trying to connect with the more human people because we actually like them, we know them, we trust them. And, and really, we're all in the business of trust. I don't care what you do, you truly are in the business of trust. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't without, be without question. Yeah, couldn't be couldn't be more right. I think that's something that a lot of uh, brands miss. Now, how does video tie in to what you do? Yeah, definitely. So when it comes to video, there's a couple of things. And, and what I want everybody to know, especially today on this show, is we're not talking about the creative type video that you go and you get a video production company to come out and there's like five guys in a truck and it's like $50,000 later, you have this one piece that you're building. What we talk about is insourcing video and how the company can actually do it themselves when it makes sense. We're not saying there's never a reason that you would outsource, but you can save a lot of time. You can be super flexible and you can have like those water cooler magic moments if you yeah. can leverage insourcing. And so really what it has to do with at the sales line is we want people to learn that they have to become the Wikipedia of their space. They have to be Ooh. ultimate educators to the thing that they do. And video is the most human way that you can communicate, educate, inspire, motivate, keep adding any words that you want to associate with your brand to that sentence. I love that. I haven't heard that. Become the Wikipedia. Nick, what do you think of that? Yeah, that's nice. And and it's a it's a great fit too. I mean, it makes sense. You know, like if you're if you're gonna be somebody in that space that is, you know, that is that is supposed to be knowledgeable that people are depending on for information. It's it's essentially your job to be that person to, you know, to stay up on on what's going on in that specific field. Absolutely. Yeah, we talk a lot about the five W's, you know, and like starting a video campaign with like who, what, why, where, when, and how, you know, and just kind of getting those questions answered. And at the, at the end of the day, you've got a pretty outrageous FAQ section, right? Yeah. So, in, yeah. So, Owen and Nick, let me talk about that for a second. And, and this isn't even like on our list of things that we're going to talk about. But when you talk about FAQs, what we talk about is the 80% videos. And what I want, hopefully, somebody is either watching that it is a salesperson or they have somebody in their company that is a salesperson that they can be like, bro or broette. I don't know. Anyway, you got to go watch this. You have to watch this because 80% videos are for your sales team. And what I mean by this is you get your sales team together and you say, what are the questions that we get asked 80% of the time? And then what you do is each individual sales rep makes a video for those questions. And here's why, because instead of writing a 15 to 20 minute email, you write a two minute email and you send them a link to that video where you, Jeff, you, John, you, Jenny, answered that actual question because what has happened is that we have moved into this digital space where 70 to 80 some of your industries 90 percent of the buyer's journey is done before they ever pick up the phone before they ever fill out the form and so back in the day people would come into brick and mortar places and you'd have two minutes as a sales rep to sell yourself and if you can sell yourself, you can sell anything. Like my parents, they used to be like, George, you could sell Ice Cube to Eskimos, right? Because yeah. I have this personality that I just like being bubbly and smiley and fun. And so what sales reps need to realize is the internet, the video is their opportunity to get the two minutes back to sell themselves as they're creating these 80% videos and sending people to their personalized video on that question that they have. Sales guys, Get it together. Let's do it. Oh my gosh! Like I, if I, if I was in church right now, I got to get a hallelujah sound effect. I got to get like a church choir going, like oh, oh sound yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You couldn't, you couldn't have said it better. And we're gonna talk a little bit more today about how George B. Thomas is using mobile video 
to get the message across. Hey, if you're just joining us today, we're talking with George B. Thomas of the saleslion.com and we're talking about mobile video marketing tricks. Uh, let's talk about mobile video. Uh, George, what is your background with mobile video? I mean, a sales organization like you, you've got to have like everything at your disposal. So why mobile video? Yeah, this is a great question, Owen. Oh, so here's the deal. Uh, two years ago, a little bit over two years ago, uh, Marcus Sheridan said, I want you to dive into this world of video. I want you to be able to figure it out because we've got to start teaching our clients how to be good at this. And I quickly realized that there was this thing that was happening. One, um, people were confused about gear. They had no idea what they should pick. Uh, two, they were paralyzed by gear, meaning as soon as you mentioned a DSLR and white balance and ISO and aperture, they like passed out and like started twitching on the floor. And yeah. and if and then here's the other thing you're like, well, use your cell phone. And they'd be like, well, that's not even a real video. Like there was this this like thought of like mobile not being proper video. And so me as the type of guy, I like to solve problems. And so I I found myself facing this problem. Like, how do you make how do you make mobile video cool? Right. And so I just started diving in, into like. Uh, people were hashtagging uh, phonography. That's phonography, people. Like they were hashtagging that, and I was trying to see the culture. Nothing and I started stumbling again. Out of your live stream faster Whoa. than. Keep going. I'm not For sure what happens. happened there, but I'm just going to yeah. keep rolling with he it. Got, he, and so <laughs> he got distracted by that phonography thing. He thought that he yeah. thought you're <laughs> referencing something you look at in the dark, not something that you make during the day. Uh, so anyway. Right yeah, that always has like some type of effect on people. I don't know what's up with that. And uh, so, so here's the thing. I started looking and finding gear that made the phone better. Uh, everything from apps to physical gear that you would put your phone in and use with your phone. And so we started baking out in these talks because I, I go around and I speak at different events. Mm -hmm. In our talk, we started baking out this section where we would talk about your smartphone. Just look, you've got under $500. Here's how you can start. And then we added this section called Gorilla Gear. And it is all of these apps that you can do mobile editing, mobile recording, and physical pieces that you can use with your phone, like B-Script and Iographer and things like that. And people were like, holy crap, this is what I'm looking for. Like something that I'm already comfortable with using, something that we already have sitting around, something that I can spend about $2,000 or less to make it super awesome. And now all of a sudden mobile video is real video. And of course we teach about prosumer and professional gear as well. But right. there was just this nugget that people were like, just immediately hungry for. And so that made me kind of, if you've ever heard of the T-shaped marketer, uh, so you know a lot about some things, but you go deep in one section. I know a lot about video, but I went really deep uh, into mobile and mobile apps and just all the different things that you can do with it. That's fantastic. So for somebody that's trying to get, um, trying, that's trying to get started in, in mobile, what do you have for them? Like, because you're talking about now, you know, like when you're standing on a stage, you have this information as far as, hey, you know, if you're starting with this, you know, then if you got less than 500 bucks, this is what you start with and all that. For somebody that's yeah. watching or listening to this right now, what do you have for them as far as, you know, hey, I'm considering getting into video. I don't want to buy a DSLR. I don't have the money to buy a DSLR. How do I get started right now with my phone? What do I got to do? What do I need? How do I get this thing going? Yeah, yeah. let's first talk about the things that, you can put around your phone, right? And okay. there's two, two, we can put links in there, but there's two main places that you can go that I'm gonna mention. And then I'm gonna really nerd out on one of them. And you're gonna think, oh, so I should probably go to the one that he nerds out on. Yes, but I wanna give you tons <laughs> of great information. So there's bscript.com and then there's iographer.com. You can go to either of those and you can find the equipment that goes around your mobile device. Bscript is amazing amazing right um it's solid it's built well you can slap your iphone 5s 6 7 your samsung your pixel your whatever will fit in there i think there's maybe two phones on the planet that don't fit in there but just look on the website there's like two phones other than that you can put your phone into this bracket um, and then it allows you to focus on really three main things that everybody should be focusing on. One is you can attach a mic to it so you have good sound. 
You can attach a light to it. So you have quality lighting for when you're doing your video. And three, it allows you to uh, put it onto a tripod so you have stability, right? So you, as the person who is getting ready to start creating video, you're focused on light, you're focused on audio, and you're focused on stability. And this B script allows you to do that. Now, it does more than that, though. It also allows you to go the extra mile. And when I say the extra mile, what I mean is if I told you you can take your cell phone and you can attach a Canon 50 millimeter lens or a Nikon 85 millimeter lens and still shoot that footage, you'd probably say no way. But it is right. absolutely possible. And so I can get that nice soft bokeh with a 50 millimeter uh, lens off of my cell phone and I can sit there and shoot at 24 frames, 30 frames, 60 frames, 120 frames. So if I want to do slow motion, like that got nerdy real quick. Some people were just starting, like, I don't even know what frame rate is, but it's going to be easy to figure out because there's apps you can use. Anyway, first starting piece, look at some gear that goes around your phone so you can focus on the three main things. Second yeah. thing you're going to do is you're going to, and we're going to talk about this hopefully in a minute, is you're going to look for the right apps to use to yeah. go as creative as you need to go. Yeah, that's the that's the next question that I wanted to ask. But before I do, I want to invite you in the audience to ask your questions about mobile video shooting or phonography to George B. Thomas. Simply type your questions in the comment section below. And remember, if you're watching this on the replay, you can still ask your questions and we'll come back and we'll answer all week. So, George B. Thomas, tell us about the mobile apps that you like to use and that you need to use for professional uh, mobile phone video. Yep. So let's talk about recording first and then we'll move into editing second. OK, great. So recording. And again, I'm going to give you two options. Stay to one that he really geeks out on. The answer is yes. It's like when I talked about B-Script versus Iographer. So there's two apps that you can check out. One is called Filmic Pro, and the other one is called Movie Pro. And while both of them have the ability to do some amazing things, the one that is super, super awesome and that I love is Filmic Pro. Right now, they're on version 6, and here's why I love it. One, it's super simple interface but it allows you to do some things that are key, like set up presets. And when I say preset, you get creative with it. So if you wanna have a preset where you can all of a sudden hit a button and you're set up to do a time lapse of like audiences coming into an event or something like that, boom, hit the preset and hit record. If all of a sudden you wanna have a preset where you're doing 24 frames per second and it's more of that like cinematic look, Boom, hit a preset, and all of a sudden you're recording in that style. You want to do an interview, and you want to have a certain audio that is your mic, and you want to have, you know, 30 frames per second. Boom, hit that preset, and all of a sudden you're ready to roll. So it's speed and flexibility to creativity through your mobile device. Great. That's awesome. We're talking about mobile video editing and the apps that you can be using to really increase the value of your mobile video shooting. Now, the first tip George talked about was Filmic Pro. And James Stewart is saying, hey, Filmic Pro is uh, su <laughs> super easy to use. Alex Cooperman is saying, wow, that's a lot of red. Uh, appreciate that, Alex. Pfft, good to see you here, my man. So nice Filmic you, Alex. Pro. Uh, Filmic Pro, George, is is a big one. What is another app that you like to use? Movie Movie Pro is definitely another app that you could use for Movie recording. Uh, what's what's yeah, Movie Pro. What's nice about that is it does have uh, an actual editor built in there. So this is the one that you can shoot and also semi edit, but. It's not my favorite editor, right? So Filmic Pro and uh, Movie Pro are the two apps that I use for recording the footage. Now, if, if you want, you can even edit on your mobile device, okay? And the question that some people ask is, why in the heck would you even want to do that? Like, why would you want to edit on your phone or on maybe an iPad 
Um, yeah. And that's because maybe you're busy. Like, for instance, a lot of what I have learned and a lot of what we teach is out of necessity. So, for example, earlier last year, we went to content marketing world. And I recorded some footage of Marcus Sheridan speaking and some time lapse of the audience. And the next thing I had to do was catch a flight and go to another event. And so being able to take that footage that I shot and then airdrop it onto my iPad and be able to edit the video while I'm on the airplane was super, super exciting to me. It saved me a bunch of time. And there's two ways that you can really do this. And of course, I'm gonna mention both ways and in this case, I'm actually going to nerd out on both of them. So All either right. one of these Woo. would be cool for you. The first one that I will say is really cool is a, an app called Luma Fusion. And it allows you to almost have what is Premiere, Adobe Premiere type uh, editing and effects. And you can bring audio in. And it's just it's very, very incredible. Which, by the way, the reason that I geek out a lot on Filmic Pro and Luma Fusion is because if you go over to YouTube, there is a butt ton, which, by the way, is a real metric of measurement. There is a right, butt yeah, ton. Google that later. Yeah, Google that. Well, maybe not. But there's a ton of video tutorials. <laughs> that, there's a ton of video tutorials that will teach you Luma Fusion and Filmic Pro. Now, the other one that I'm going to geek out as far as editing on your mobile device is Premiere Clips. And Premiere Clips allows you to go ahead and start a project. And what I use it for is I do a rough draft and then I push it to the cloud because now when I get back to my main computer and I've got 27 inches of awesome goodness to look at, I can bring in that project and finish it in more of a professional editing software, but I was at least able to rough cut it while I'm on the plane or the train or the automobile. E anyway, yeah. maybe people got that or not. I don't know if you did. I there you it. go. Bring up, I'll tell you, because you're preaching to the converted when it comes to, I, I edit so much uh, video on my mobile phone. And these are two apps I have not used. So I can't wait to geek out on them just a little bit more. Uh, there's so much value in in the travel time, right? You know, yeah. I, I'm married, I've got kids, and so my wife and I were out where we do stuff all the time. And, you know, I'm in the I'm used to just kind of jumping in the driver's seat. But for those of you guys that are 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 used to just jumping in the driver's seat, try splitting up your drive time a little bit and getting the rough cut of your of your footage uh edited on the way to grandma's house or yeah, on yeah. the way to the gym. You know what I mean? Uh if it's a 20 minute drive, you you've got some time. So these are fantastic editors. Uh, or fantastic tips, George B. Thomas of the saleslion.com. How, what's the learning curve on these? Are, are these sort of like easy to use or does it take, you, you know, sort of a, a Beethoven? To really no, sort of no. For some of these apps. See, that's the thing. If, if I was going to teach Beethoven techniques, I would totally go prosumer or professional. And that's what I would teach people. One of the key metrics, the thing that I pay attention to most I was since I wanted to talk about was how can I find the things that are the easiest to use because yeah. remember remember the original problem was that people would pass out and start twitching when you mentioned the word DSLR or ISO and so this had to be just totally intuitive to what they're already used to using which is an app type interface uh, hey, there it is in your face. And it had to have, which is why I mentioned YouTube a while ago, some educational resources where if somebody wanted to nerd out for an hour to two hours and just watch all of somebody's tutorials, they would be a professional smartphone videographer within a short amount of time. That That's key because they have to get those quick wins to continue to use it and go down the lane of, wow, this is really working. Let's get better at this. Now, the, with the with the apps that you mentioned, um, are those all iPhone specific, or do they are there some crossovers there? And and a, a, a kind of like a follow up question to that is, do you personally recommend the iPhone for doing all this stuff, the Android for doing all this stuff, or does it even matter? Or tablet, See, really, for that matter. Yeah, I'm trying to make you draw your line in the sand right now, so that you can yeah. have a bunch of people in the chat that a bunch of people that listen to this that are going to be like, "Oh, this guy's awesome," and then the other half is going to be like, "Man, this guy, this guy sucks." Well, That's it's what I'm good. to force you to do right now. 
Yeah, which is good, Nick, because like just the other day, I was thinking to myself that I don't get enough hate mail um, in my inbox. And so this will actually Perfect. bump that up, Perfect fit. which is which is a good thing. So so here's what I'll say. I'm going to answer it this way. Whatever one you have is the one you should use. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's great. Whatever one you have is what you should use, right? Now, I just showed you what I use. And yeah. um, to answer your question, these do cross over. Like Filmic Pro is Android and uh, um, uh, iPhone. And uh, LumaFusion, I do believe, is on both as well because that was another thing that we needed to pay attention to. Um, really, what I want everybody to understand is it's – even though we're talking about devices and tools um, – the reason that I, I want to go back to my answer because I feel like I need to like say something that's a little bit more important than use the one that you have. What I want you to realize is it's not about what phone you have. It's about how stinking creative uh, you can get and, and how you can tell the best story about your product, your service, yeah. your people. Because here's one thing that I talked about sales for a second in the beginning of this, and I want to talk to marketing for a second. Marketing, I want you to realize if you're using the mobile devices, if you're doing mobile editing, if you're doing mobile shooting, the whole point of this is so that you can show it. Because what we as marketers need to realize is if we don't show it, it doesn't exist. The consumer BS bullcrap meter is on point. And so anything that you think that they'll just get or they should know that, mm -mm, you just made a fatal flaw in your marketing strategy. Yeah, those are some good points. Now, let's walk. Can you walk us through sort of like your workflow or your checklist yep. for capturing great mobile video? We've talked about some of the apps for filming. We've talked about some of the apps for editing. But then there's process, right? It's like, um, what, you know, what do you have to shoot? What do you have to have in your bucket so that when you yep. go – uh, you've got everything in line. So if you could, George B. Thomas of the saleslion.com, walk us through the workflow, the checklist for uh, creating great mobile video. Yeah. So the first thing is obviously get the gear that you want to use. So if it's the beast grip and if it's a wide angle lens and if it's a, a Rode mic pro and a beast grip light, right? So lighting, stability, audio, your phone. The second thing that I always make sure of is that I have enough room on my phone. This is very oh, important. So so you need to make sure that any photos, any historical videos that you have taken those off so that you have the full amount of space. Now, what I do is there is a technology by iScan, uh, which you can stick into your phone and you can take all of your photos and videos, immediately put it on a thumb drive through the lightning port. Um, and then it'll ask you, do you want to delete this uh, stuff on your phone? And you say yes, because then you have this thumb drive that you stick in your computer and you dump all of your photos and videos onto your computer for to be safe, which you should be doing anyway. Now you have your whole entire phone, 128, 256 gigs to put that footage on, How, whatever, whatever your phone has, right? But the fact is that you have to have space. The other thing is that you want to pay attention to that you're not getting notifications. So when I'm ready to hit record, I'm making sure that I'm turning off any notifications. I'm probably turning on airplane mode because then nothing's coming in and crushing or killing that shot because it'll – like if somebody calls you, whoop. Oh, stops the video and guess what you get to answer your phone and then you're pissed because you don't want to talk to them in the first place and they just <laughs> ruined your shot which always sucks and so i'm making sure that all the, the, those notifications are off the next thing is that i've already looked at where i want to shoot like i know that it's going to be at a park bench at 11 o'clock because there's no buses that drive by the light's perfect and so i've already scouted that out we go there we set up the equipment and we hit record. There is a precursor to that, though, and that is whoever I'm recording, whether it's myself or another talent, I've given them some bullet points of what we're going to talk about that day so they can start to think about that versus just saying, hey, Johnny, let's go out to the park and shoot this thing. And they're like, ah, and they have no clue what they're going to say. So you got to give them a little scenario. Now, once I record, so I, I hit my preset. And I say, hey, this one's going to be an interview. So 30 frames per second, uh, 1080p will be fine. I don't need to go to 4K, which, by the way, uh, you can go 1080p, 2K, 4K with Filmic Pro. So if you wow. wanted to shoot 30 frames per second at uh, 4K with your phone, 
Well, it ain't real video. Yeah, it is. It's real video because it's freaking 4K. Anyway, family show. I better calm down a little bit. So wow. then I record. I record. <laughs> Slow down, footage. cowboy. Yeah. Slow yeah. down. Yeah. Come on. Go ahead. Oh, I just gotta say, whoever's editing this, make sure you censor freaking. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I think I think freaking is still family friendly. I believe. Good. I think good, it's good, still good. family friendly. I think we're good. Good. We're All family right. edgy. All we're right. family edgy yeah. here we, we want your 12 year olds to be able to listen but we want we want to also like stimulate parental conversation afterwards like well son <laughs> let me let me explain to you how that works yeah 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 <laughs> so so after i shoot the footage here's what i do i pay attention to the fact that i don't want any of my footage to be downsized so what i don't do is save it to my camera roll because if I was to save that footage to the camera roll and then bring it over, it actually it, it crunches the data. I want as much as I can. So I'll do one of two things. If I know I'm going to edit it on my iPad, I will airdrop it to my iPad. If I know I'm going to edit it on my computer, I'll airdrop it to my computer. This, of course, is Mac, and it's it, that's just my workflow. If you're a PC, first of all, let me give my condolences and say I'm sorry. Second of all, what you're going to do is hook your phone in and you're just going to drag your footage over. But I airdrop it, right? And then I just go into whatever editor that I'm going to use and I start slicing and dicing. I, of course, have my editor, if it's on my iPad, hooked into Dropbox where I have a, a set of music. I have a set of like bumper intros. I have a set of all those good things. You know, it's interesting that you say don't save the footage to your phone because I do that constantly. I didn't realize it was compressing it uh, down into a, uh, you know, degrading the uh, the quality. Have you noticed that before, Nick? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And, um, you, you know, like th this kind of just to go ahead and say this as well, because it's kind of um, – I mean, it, I'm not I'm not going anti-mobile at all because I love being able to shoot mobile video. Um, yeah. But but when I think of all this stuff and I think about running around and 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 um, I want to ask him about this when we come back. When I think about running around, taking a tripod with you anyway, having the um, the iographer with you, having your mic with you, and all that stuff. The only difference there is he's back. The only the only difference for me would be what actual recording device that you're using. So 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 right. for for yeah. So for me, I'm thinking like. You know, I'm thinking like, well, if I'm if I'm lugging around all this stuff anyway, then 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 I might as well I might as well take my DSLR with me um, as well. In addition to, you know, in addition to the mobile video and maybe use the, the mobile videos, maybe like a as a second camera or something like that so that I, you know, can get the additional footage to really, you know, to really make it, you know, to take the production up another notch or whatever. Yeah, so you just mentioned a couple of things, Nick, that I totally want to jump on. First of all, everybody should know that I have a, a bag that I take that is all mobile gear, and I have a bag that I take that is DSLR and all, all of that equipment as well. Um, but the what I'll say for the first thing is you I heard you talking about audio. And just so everybody knows, I do actually use a video uh, Rode Mic Pro right into the phone. Gives me great audio. However, any smart person is going to have some type of uh, lav mic, HN4 recorder. So we have both sets of audio and we can choose the one that we want to use that's better than the other uh, for, for that clip. So know that with your mobile gear, you may want to have a lapel and you may want to have a Zoom HN4 recorder. Hopefully I said all those NH4 things right. I usually jack that up. But you guys, if you Google it, you'll find it. The other we, thing, on the H4, sure, I know what you mean. There's also an H6, so there's there's a ton of them out yeah. there. Just just type something in Google with audio recorder, you'll be good to go. The other yeah. thing though is absolutely, absolutely, Nick, when you were talking about it being a B-roll camera, mobile is beautiful. Like maybe you already do have that DSLR, and you're like, I just watch this because Owen and Nick are funny, and George looks good. I don't know, but if you already have that camera. <laughs> then what you can do is you can say, oh, they're talking about mobile video. Shoot, I could take my cell phone and put it on a slider or I could get the DJI Osmo and I could actually do like really, uh, you know, buttery smooth kind of B-roll with this gimbal for my phone. I, I can get some shots that I otherwise couldn't get when I'm doing this interview style or talking head style. There it is. Boom, oh. drop the mic. Oh. Right? Yeah, drop the mic. Like it just gets you can just get really great footage, B-roll footage 
um, to make those pieces of educational content that you're creating way, way better. Yeah, B-roll is a great is a great way. I I've got a video dropping today on Facebook uh, and Instagram. That's a, the DJI Osmo mobile footage. It's a great way to make transitions too, right? If you're talking about topic A in front of uh, uh, your wall, and then you're talking about topic B in front of your wall, a great way to go in between that is to just show you know B-roll clips, just real fast. Da 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 da. Boom. Hey everybody, and now we're going to talk about. Uh, not talk about segment B. Really great stuff today, Alex Guberman. I want you to know, Alex Guberman is uh, is tearing it up with uh, with jokes in the comment section. Just remember, Alex, you go live every day next week, and I will be there. I will be there. <laughs> Dane Stewart is uh, is uh, saying site check is so important. Uh, I loved that, George. The uh, the section about like checking your phone memory and all that kind of stuff. David Maraviaga is saying all of the videos I make on my YouTube channel are done with my iPhone and in most cases with the front facing camera. Hey, George, what's the difference between the front facing camera and and the main camera, like the selfie cam versus the main cam of your phone? Is there a difference there in quality or or anything like that? Absolutely. And it really depends. And I'm going to go total um, iPhone nerd here for a second because I don't really use anything else. But you if you're using something else should check and you'll find that, yes, it's different. How what I will say, though, is uh, iPhone six and before uh, the selfie camera only did like 720 uh, pixels by whatever. And so it was not as good quality. Now, the seven and up, it's. Either one is shooting at 1080p. So, yeah. so here's the thing. What's very interesting for, for me when this happened was like a lot of people would be trying to like vlog type video and yeah. they would flip the, they would flip their phone around because they realized the selfie camera was 720, but then they really didn't know if they were following the rule of thirds or if they were getting a good shot. Now, exactly. if you're doing a vlogging style with an iPhone seven or above, you now have a monitor and a camera that is shooting at 1080p and so you can just you you can do way 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 better so yeah that's great stuff yeah, that's danny a, that's a, talk talk more about buttery because it's thanksgiving good stuff guys <laughs> and alex Guberman of is saying my live broadcasts are canceled until further notice i love that. <laughs> and real quick and real quick also um david gave a gave a fantastic tip here for anybody that doesn't want to spend money on a lavalier mic you know if you're just getting started you want to try this stuff out um he said when he didn't have a, a, a lavalier mic he used the bluetooth headset tucked into his collared shirt they and with that it wasn't visible and the sound was crystal clear so that's a good tip for you if you're trying to save some money you know while you're testing all this stuff out yeah i, I love that you know in the very beginning i did something very similar i took my my headset and uh, I, I i bought a, a an extra iphone headset clipped off the uh the the earpiece and and I would just clip it to my lapel right here and so I had sort of like a makeshift uh makeshift lavalier that I would keep uh plugged in great stuff hey, Dave here one more tip one more tip because you guys went down this road and then you can do whatever you want to do uh all of us probably have a girlfriend a boyfriend a husband a wife a son a daughter a grandma a grandpa somebody we know that also has a phone. Another trick you can do is use one phone to record the actual video and use Ooh, another yeah. phone to record the audio and then just put them together later as well. So I could literally have like, you know, but like here or pointing over here or something, and it could be capturing way better audio for me. Nice. And since we're going down that road, let's just keep layering this stuff on there. This, like layers of butter here since we're talking about Buttery that butter good. on bread here. Hey, so, hey, 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 hang on a second. Hang on one second. Now yeah. we're cooking with salt. Oh, Man. oh, oh, oh you did it. That's it. <laughs> it. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so since, uh, since you, since you're rolling with their phone anyway, um, you know, with that, with your other person's phone, you can also use that as a monitor as well. You can actually mirror what it is. So you can actually use your front facing cam, uh, or not your front facing cam, but your rear facing cam for the better quality. And then you can actually mirror to that other person's phone and actually use that as a monitor um as well yeah one other layer of butter one other layer of butter if if you're using filmic pro and you are recording with your phone and you have an ipad filmic pro also has a remote app where you can actually have your ipad facing you 
So you get a monitor that has a rule of thirds on your iPad and you can hit the record button. So if you're recording by yourself and you got nobody else to set up the, the scene for you, your phone is recording you. You see yourself in the iPad, you hit record and you go. And now nice. it's one person show. Nice. I, I'll tell you, all of this stuff just I can't even. It's too much for me. It's too much for me. George B. Thomas, great to have you on the show. We've been friends for a while now. It's super good to finally have you on the show. How do we stay in touch with you and learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, definitely. You can hit me up on the Twitters at George B. Thomas, uh, Facebook, Mr. George B. Thomas, LinkedIn, George B. Thomas. Like just, I'm on social. Let's just say that. However, if you do have specific questions about video, mobile video, uh, you can hit me up, George, at the salesline.com as well. That's awesome. George, great to have you on the show today. I hope you'll come back and maybe talk oh, more with us. In the future. Yeah, 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 without a doubt. That would be super rad. Great to, great to have you today. And Nick, great to have you on the Business of Video podcast. I love doing the show with you. I really do. And I want to invite all Likewise. of you guys watching live at home. You can subscribe to the show when you go to the business of video podcast.com or just click the link in the description box, you'll go to our chat bot, click the blue button, and then you'll get an alert for every single one of our shows. Nick, great to have you here. Likewise. And I also want to say that for anybody that's watching this live right now, that is USA based. Have an awesome Thanksgiving. You Thank Owen, you, also have an awesome Thanksgiving. Thank you, buddy. Always a great to have you here. Likewise, and I also want to say that for anybody that's watching this live right now that is USA-based, have an awesome Thanksgiving. Do you want to know the secrets to Thanksgiving? Thank you, buddy. Always a pleasure. Great hey, guys, what's here. going on? Uh, Likewise, it's Owen and Video I also here. Kind of messed that last little part up, but right I hope you're still with USA me. Based, and uh, since awesome we had some of you guys. Do you want to know the secrets to Thanksgiving? <laughs> since you, Thank since you we buddy. had some of you guys Always thought we'd stick around and do some great Hey, guys, what's here. going on? Guys here. Uh, Likewise, it's Owen Video here. Kind of messed that last little part Oh, my gosh. What a nightmare trying to get that thing set up. How are you guys? What's going on? Good to see you guys out there today. Thought we would do a little Q&A since you're still on the show. Uh, we got 26 live viewers, and uh, I'm not really doing too much. I'm putting together some uh, of my YouTube videos for the week and uh, thought we would answer some questions. Creative Queen is asking about... Um, <clears throat> Uh, is uh, yeah, I know. Aaron, Aaron said the audio is still going. Creative Queen is asking a little bit about uh, uh, lighting tips. Uh, lighting is a challenge. Lighting is is kind of a challenging thing to do. But I'll tell you, you've got to change your lighting based on where you're at. You know, you guys could tell I've got a brand new light here, and it's maybe it's a little bit overexposed, but it's really looked the best it's looked. In a long time, we got the red, we've got the blue, uh, and all things are looking good. So I'd love to know, uh, you guys got some funny comments coming in. What are some of your questions related to either uh, mobile phone video or lighting tips or any of the things that you guys have going on? It's it's just really great to see you and uh, be here on the line with you today. Lily Tree is saying, I never knew mobile phone video could get so complex. Better check what quality my phone will film in before I get too excited about it. Yeah, you know, mobile phone video is phenomenal. In fact, what we're trying to do is we're actually making a push to do everything in mobile. Um, and the reason we want to do that is because most people have mobile. So, you know, with all the different cameras around, people like me, DSLRs, not my thing. I did not spend any time... I did not spend any time in college learning how uh, to use DSLRs. In fact, mo in fact, most of my time in college was spent um, uh, learning how to manage uh, production, learning how to create workflows, and so that's really what I'm expert at. Um, that dad, Zach, is saying, anyone using those little selfie lights for video? Uh, it just so happens I've got a little selfie light right here. And, you know, I, I think that it's better than nothing, you know, like this little d device has three different layers uh, to it. So I can go one, two, and three. Uh, I'm working on the same charge that I had before. And I'll tell you, 
when you're at the zoo with your kids or where you're at the the park with your kids, this will come in handy, but it's going to give you like a weird sort of alien look in your eyes. Let's see if we can really kind of re recreate that right now. Oops. Um, right here. So I don't know if you can see the reflection in my eyes there. You might be able to see it a little bit, um, but it's it's good. It's good. It's It's better than not having it, I would say. Yay yeah, or nay, Nicole is saying, I want to get a new computer to video edit and set up a level three live stream. Okay, so you're listening to Luria. Pfft. Any specific recommendations? Live stream pros recommendations are nice, but do not specify brands or models. Look, if you want to be up and running with live streaming, then MacBook Pro is the way to go. Like MacBook Pro is, is plug it in and you're good to go. If you want to get really fancy then yeah you can get a pc and you've got you got to just custom build a pc and what i know live stream pros does i know that they go mobile on macbook but then their office shoot is on a pc so that's sort of my advice there <clears throat> and i hope that that's helpful for you man i got this cough in my throat uh aaron jemison is saying uh, iphone can film in 2k yeah iphone is phenomenal um Man, I just love the way that this light is looking. So big shout out to Dominique Mays, who uh, suggested that I, I shoot in um, uh, with a, get a, 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 a this box in my house. So I got the soft box in my house or in my studio, and now it's it's. I mean, I just think it looks looks phenomenal. How your colors are bright. I'm bright now. The it's in the 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 right spot uh, or the wrong spot. Let me actually go change it. So still maybe a bit a bit bright. Am I still a little overexposed? That's okay. That's okay. Yay or nay, Nicole saying I'm a PC person, so it's cus so custom is okay. Yeah, you know, my producer, Melissa Media, has uh, a pretty custom built, uh, pretty radical PC. It costs about two thousand bucks. And so you just need to be ready uh, to spend the cash. So I think I'm a little overexposed. Let's play with webcam settings and see what webcam settings does. Let's see how that kind of like plays with it. I might dim it out a little bit. So what do you guys what do you guys see? I'm waiting to just kind of look at it now. Looks about the same. Let's go low light profile, see what happens. That zooms me in a little bit. You guys were you're watching me play with this live. And then a test profile, but webcam settings is is pretty good. It's an app for a PC or for Mac, and it helps you dial in your webcam, your Logitech webcam. So I can kind of come in here and really mess with the. Joe's code is saying, uh, "Nope, not overexposed." Great, great. Uh, thank you so much. I'm glad to see that. And you know, I could like tone down my brightness here. Of course, I think that's getting a little too dark. I just want to see what that looks like on YouTube because I've got Wirecast open. Wirecast is on a different screen with a different resolution than my iMac. Um, so, yeah, it gets a little dark. I don't really like that too much. I like to have the bright ooh, bright blue colors there. Um, and then I can add some contrast. Contrast kind of cool. I can get like kind of some comic booky kind of thing going on. Um the change after webcam settings was good. So there's just so much that I can do here. And I think if I turn it, let's see if what happens when I turn it off. Julie, uh, Yuli says I look healthy. Well, praise the Lord for that. You know, uh, so the part, I'd say I've been sick all weekend, guys. So I'm like a little bit thinner than I was last week. And I am grateful for that because I get, I get, look at my little chubby chipmunk cheeks, right? I don't like it. I don't like it. It's, it makes me feel uh, um, hefty, hefty. So what do you guys think about this? This is just pure unadulterated. Um, and then if I go back to camera default, 
So I don't know. I'm playing with it. You look like in heaven. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm in heaven anytime I'm talking to you guys, right? Air 5. So, you know, um, I hope you guys liked turning down brightness, you said. All right, let's try that again. I'm like kind of like talking out loud. We're just kind of like stumbling through some of this stuff together, which is cool. This is kind of like what live streaming is is all about. Yeah, I do feel better. Thank you. Some gnarly stuff happening this weekend, let me tell you. That's kids. I like it too. I feel like it's a real natural, healthy look. I got to keep my fan on so I don't get too flushed in my face. Okay, so you're saying change the gain. See if I can do that here. Preferences, maybe. Basic. Uh, turn it up or turn it down. Yay yeah, or nay, Nicole says, are you in a MacBook Pro? No, I'm in an iMac. And I'm using the Logitech C920. I'd like to change it to the... Um, I'd like to get either the, the the 4K, the Brio, or the C930. I haven't quite made that decision yet. So I'm going to turn the gain way up. Obviously, that's not going to do it. And if I turn the gain way down, then that does something a little bit different. George Puckett is saying, are these people paid to flatter you? Well, anybody who watched this, this video is increasing my watch time, which helps more ads play on my channel. So in a sense, yeah. Uh, Classic Ride is saying, I have to get a dedicated camera for some footage, but I definitely need a better phone that doesn't overheat. You know, uh, the L, uh, uh, so what do you guys think of this with the gain turned down a little bit? Is this, I feel like it's not bright enough. Like, I like the blue. Um, um, uh, I like the blue sort of uh, coming up. Uh, I like to have more blue in there. Because my goal here is, I, I want the show to be fun and bright and like you know like boom like welcome to the show you know um that's kind of like the goal here so classic ride uh i'm about to get the canon gh7 uh g7x mark ii great looking camera um i really i'm really excited about it uh 600 bucks but it's selfie cam it's what uh, uh jeff weiss uses the weiss family blog and they do some great stuff. Yeah, the blue is blue. Looks a little sunburn. Yeah. How does the how does my T zone look? T zone looks a little overexposed. I think. Let me see if I can. What I'm doing is I'm just like changing the camera or changing the light angle. That might be too dark. Okay. Less shiny, but the shine hides the wrinkles. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's see. What what can we do to hide the, the thinning hairline? That looks pretty good. So if I just like back the light up a little bit, what do you guys think of it now? If I just back the light up a little bit, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm thinking about putting some shelves over the, the white starburst here to kind of keep the, kind of mellow it out a little bit. <clears throat> I always want my eyes to look bluish, very blue. What do you guys think? How are we looking? No, I don't want to wear makeup, you know, because makeup just adds an extra layer. It adds an extra layer of stuff that I've got to do. Let's turn the brightness down just a smidge. See, it's hard because I got like two windows open. And on Wirecast, I look really red. On YouTube, I'm looking, it looks pretty even. Keep the starburst. You don't think it's just like this big empty space? I love it. I I I love the um <laughs> nothing wrong with thinning hair. Wear a baseball cap to hide the hair. Uh looks really good since I did that. I just wear a beard. Are you bald the the dad Zach? I think I remember seeing you like that. So I like this. I think I'm going to angle it up a little bit and kind of keep it like this and and I'll just maybe I need to move the sign a little bit. 
or would I need to go? What happens when I do that? No, too much. I want to get that on air sign in there. The white burst is distracting. Okay, so what do you guys think? No, what's digital makeup? It pops. Okay. It's like, because I want to get that on air sign in there, but then it throws me off balance a little bit. I'm using Wirecast 7. Um, I bought Wirecast 7 for 500 bucks. And then, um, like two weeks later, two months later, they're like, oh, upgrade for $200. Elizabeth saying, keep the starburst. Uh, my friend over here saying, you are handsome, bro. Thank you. Put the words Owen video in the starburst. Aaron, that is a great idea. Did you see that in the group? That's not a bad idea. Also thinking about maybe doing... Um, also thinking about maybe doing something like this. Like taking... You know... And kind of doing something like that with it. That's one idea. Oops. And I've put these lights up here. I don't think that those lights really can even be seen. Maybe they can. Gotta go. Creative Queen, where are you calling from? Where are you coming in from? Pfft, good to see you. Those lights don't look too bad. Maybe I just need new batteries in them. Keep them fresh. Um, okay, one more thing before you go. Okay, so this is me. This is me with a hat on. Is this professional though? Like, are people gonna see this? Sorry, are people gonna see this? Hey, Joe's Co's before you go. Um, are people gonna see me with a hat on and be like, oh, that's unprofessional? I just can't tell. Now you guys are leaving. UK. Okay, yeah, so it's late over there for you. All right, guys, always a pleasure. Um, Love getting your feedback. So helpful to workshop this stuff with you guys. And remember, we're all in this together. You know, I am, um, um, yeah, well, I was going to put light bulbs in there. I was going to put light bulbs in there. Um, are you, okay, so psych and stature, are you saying, um, nah, it doesn't look unprofessional? Uh, no hat. See, that's what I think, too. I think no, I think a hat is, is a little bit too casual. Um, here's, here's. Better without hat. Okay. So here's sort of the thing I want you guys to know. And by Creative Queen, it's so good to see you. Um, later, Joe's Codes. Pff, appreciate you. Uh, that Dag Zach. Pff, appreciate you. I'm so glad you're part of the community here. Last thing I'll say, and then I'll go, is that I'm rebuilding my channel. from. It's like it might as well be from scratch. Because I built my channel up on SEO and WordPress. To this day, that's where most of my subscribers come from. And I don't do that stuff anymore. I do video marketing now. And, and it was really just a fluke that the WordPress stuff started taking off. So I've got WordPress stuff that gives me like 500 subscribers a month. And then I've got some live video tips that give me like the other 500 a month. So I'm growing by like 1,000 subs a month. Um uh, so, you know, the problem is, is I talk about video marketing now. So all the people that subscribe for WordPress tips, they basically unsubscribe or don't watch new videos. So I want you guys to know if you guys got smaller channels, I'm right there with you. Like I treat my channel like I have 6,000 subs. And even though I got 28,000, um, 29,000, I treat it like I have 6,000. And that, that keeps me kind of, um, Humble, and it reminds me that we're always building and we're always growing. So we're we're all in this together. Beanie Draws says, "Yay, we're still online." I'm about to hang up right now. Um, my buddy in India is saying, "I am India." I wish I wish you could p type how um, you pronounce your name. Elizabeth is saying, "We don't care about your hat." Hey, pff, amen to that. Um, good to see. I sense a new camera there. No, Beanie, get this. It's a new light. It's a new light. And look at how that light has made all the difference. Psych and Stats says I have 20, you know. It's much harder 
to get subscribers now than it was a couple years ago. But if you can get subscribers now, if you can master that, it's way easier to build a YouTube channel. Nurture in Christ is saying, Owen, you are so awesome. Thanks for this informative video. Your channel is growing wonderful and you deserve it. I love your work ethic and passion. Your hard work and humility are so admirable. Well, thank you for that, uh, Nurture in Christ. I, uh, I thank my creator for the blessings that he has seen fit to send my way. Uh, and I'm taking a, a quick little screenshot of this comment right now so I can use it in the future. Hey guys, while I have you here, before I go, what are, okay, what kind of light is that? It's a Studio Pro. It's a Studio Pro light and it's an octagon. And it's angled, um, it's angled. Hey, Lily Tree, thank you. Um, and Beanie Draws, you're down, my down-to-earth attitude. Thanks, man. Uh, that Dad Zach, thank you so much for that. Pff, I appreciate that. It's always nice to get uh, a super chat. Uh, I like this after party. Maybe we'll do, um, we'll do more of that. Um, so, yeah, it's amazing how one light can, can make this whole difference. Let me ask you guys this. What, what are, what are like the things you want to know about? What should I be making more videos about, right? I do a lot of video marketing, uh, grow your business with video. I don't do a lot of get more views and get more subs. That's really like Brian and Nick's territory, um, Tim Schmoyer, but I can do more of that. I can give you my take on it if you're into that kind of thing. I just figured you're getting enough of it. Um, but would love to know, just kind of like if you're out there and you're watching still, uh, what are some of the topics you'd like to see me cover uh, based on what you know about me? I'll even read you guys some of the things I'm working on um, over here because I have like a master title spreadsheet that I use. Let me just go to it. So I've got this ti thing, titles I should make. How many tags should I put in my video? Is adding 2018 going to help my videos rank? Should I add quotes around my tags? Uh, my three-point title strategy. How to grow your business with video on Instagram. How to grow your business with Facebook video ads. How to grow your business with follow-up videos. How to grow your business with live video. Uh, how to grow your business with video memes. Those are some ideas. Um, George Puket, Is it Phuket or Puckett? Good to see you, George. I appreciate all your engagement. Um... Lighting makes such a difference. Beanie is saying you should mix some of that in there. Some of what? Some of what? Uh, are you saying some of the subscriber and stuff? Uh, Yuli is saying using AdWords. Dude, I do a lot of AdWords, believe it or not. Okay. Okay. So I did talk about Beanie is saying, yeah, the, sub the subscribers. Okay, T-shirt marketing. Yeah, I could do T-shirt marketing. Elizabeth is saying tech stuff for newbies. What kind of tech stuff? I'm going to write this stuff down, by the way, guys. Um, so Beanie is saying more on subs and views. And I'm going to put Facebook and YouTube. Um, okay, that's good. Those are really great ideas. Thank you, Nurture. And Nurture, are you following me at The Christian Perspective on Facebook? You should check that out. I think you would like that. Could you finish that? Yay or nay? I, okay. I like the one you did about the agenda on how to run your be live vids, your flow. You got kind of cut off and ran out of time. Could you finish that? Yeah. And by the way, yay or nay, Nicole, um, I've got a whole playlist on... Um, I got a whole playlist on be live right now. They're actually a client... And I've made a ton of videos for them. And I'm going to find it for you right now. Uh, now, this is more about how to do B Live, But I have like a whole thing. Okay, so video advertising 101. Okay, cool. These are great, guys. These are... Yuli is saying I wasted money because I didn't know what I was doing on AdWords. That is a part of AdWords, though. Um so when you say AdWords, you're talking about YouTube marketing. Is that to grow your vlog, Yuli? Video advertising one-on-one. 
101. And I'm writing down your guys' names so I can give you shots out when I make these videos. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Now. You guys know what worked for me. You know what really, really worked for me is making videos that uh, art faux design. Thank you. Um, so, first of all, um, Nicole, did you get the playlist? That's more about how to use BeLive, but I have a lot more coming on how to really like dial in your live stream and make them like just killer. So, who said video advertising? That was Aaron. Good to see you, Aaron. Uh, live streaming is like I'm I'm so good at it. I'm I, you know I'm not gonna say I'm better at it than anybody else, but I do things there that I think are very unique. Um, yes, okay for the anniversary. Yes, I would love to do more of that stuff. I just want to make sure you guys are into it, like I did for the anniversary. This is so guys, so beneficial. You guys should all do this with your subscribers. To grow my channel. Okay, so I have an ad running right now that I'm running to a thousand. Um, uh, please don't call me that. You got it, buddy. You got it. Um, yeah, Elizabeth is saying, "Cool, the Be Live video series. Looking forward to it. It's in the uh, description box here. Uh, just scroll up a little bit. I posted the link to the play playlist. Uh, Dad Zach is saying, "I love tech stuff for noobs, like someone someone starting from the ground up." Okay. Ground up tech stuff. How about that? Ground up. Ground up tech stuff. I'm going to put tech for noobs. And that's Dad Zach. I love Dad Zach, by the way. I love the whole name because I'm all about being a dad. In fact, on my Instagram, you're going to start seeing more about me doing dad stuff with my kids because that's why, that's like my motivation for all this. And I want to show people that side of me. Beanie saying that's how I initially found you, was initially looking to, to learn t-shirt marketing, found Roberto, then found Nick, and then found and then found you after Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um Yeah, totally, man. Um uh, Beanie is saying, to be honest, I think your lighting has also boosted your camera frame rate because you look more live and real. I agree. And I was on a call with Dominique Mays, or, or just on chat, and Dominique is out in uh, Belgium. And he's someone that just watches the channel and just was like, hey, I could offer you some help. And I go, I go, hey, reach me on, on Facebook Messenger. Let's just talk. And he's like, use a softbox instead of the camera you're using. And now it's just changed. The whole, and I've had, this cam I've had this light for two years. And I didn't bring it in here because it's, it's big. And I was like, ah, I don't want this big light in my, in my, and I thought, ah, you know, whatever. And turns out it's, it's just been all, is it amazing? You make these little changes and it makes this huge difference. So I am going to experiment with the lights back here. I'm going to put some Edison lights on them and see how it looks. Nurture in Christ is saying, I'd love to see more dad life stuff. Yeah, I do a lot of that. My biz and my brother's bids are focusing more on vid. So you're psych and stats tutor. So like psychology and stats. So math and psychology. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Color grading for live streaming. <sighs> well, that's not me. <laughs> that's Peter McKinnon right there. Because I'll tell you, with live streaming, for me, it's all about the Logitech. It's all about the camera you're using and then dialing in the settings. Since I use a webcam for everything and I've been so happy going to a webcam because I've got my cannons up here and I'm just so tired of like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sean Cannell is way better at a cannon now than I'm ever going to be. And I had to look at being competitive. Was I, am I going to be competitive trying to compete with Sean Cannell or am I better off like finding out what I'm good at? You know what I'm good at? I'm good at production. I'm good at live streaming. I'm good at handling clients. And so we doubled down on our clients and we put more energy into them. And guys, I doubled my client base last month. Okay. So at the end of the day, I make really good money doing this. All right. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that, that you can do this and I can help you learn that stuff. You know, it's not enough to just 
sell t-shirts, Beanie. It's like, how do you sell a person who bought one t-shirt? How do you sell them five more t-shirts over the course of a year? You know what makes great shirts is creator fundamentals. Dan Courier makes great stuff. Beanie is saying, I need to get one of those lights for my vlogs. I would love to see you vlogging. I love your look, Beanie. I love it. It's like you are you look a lot like your artwork. It's interesting. Um, dad stuff, making great connections. Okay, guys. I got a lot of great information from you guys today. Uh, Beanie, more on subs and views. Video marketing on AdWords, Yuli. Video advertising 101 from Aaron. Live streaming workflow, be live. Um, who was that? Who said that? That was yay or nay, Nicole. And there was one more. He has an exercise scientist in his biz. Yeah, lighting up paper evenly is a tough one. Something I can point down to. Elizabeth is saying you talked about Sean who? Sean Cannell, video influencers is his channel. Yay or nay, Nicole? I put yay or nay because like I know I'll remember but watch what happens. I go to shoot these videos and I forget. Okay, guys. So, I hope I don't lose too much hair. My hair is my branding at the moment. Dude, I have been there. My hair has been my branding and uh, since cancer, it hasn't really come back the way it used to be but it's still here. So, guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate that you're trying to get better at this. It's hard. What we do is hard, and it's it's harder than working a job. But at the end of the day, um, you don't work for someone else. You control your own schedule. You know, like I honestly, I got I got stuff to do. Um, uh, like I don't have stuff to do. I mean, like at the end of the day, I, I've got to upload my videos for. Me and Brian G have three collabs coming out this week. I got to get those done. I could do it tonight. My kids are gone. They're out with my wife over at the park. You know, like, I could do whatever I want right now. You know why? Because I don't have a freaking job. Um, this is what I do. And you guys can do it too. It, it just takes time and it takes focused effort, right? It's not enough to make drawing videos. You got to monetize those drawing videos through AdSense and through selling t-shirts and maybe even selling prints, Beanie. Um, I'm bald from the back, so as long as it doesn't get worse. Um, Beanie is saying it's hard, but the problem solving is fun. I find it that way too. I find it, it's it's fun. You know, there's times where I'm, I'm frustrated and I'm angry um, and I've even cried on the floor in that room right over there, <laughs> you know, um, over clients and over people disrespecting me and, and, and over other people getting, um, speaking gigs that I feel like I should have got, you know, but it, it's all part of the climb. And at the end of the day, I would rather spend 80 hours a week building my dream than 40 hours a week of being a part of someone else's dream, you know? Uh, and I get to work with Nick and Brian and um, Daryl, and we're all a part of each other's dream, you know? So it's very cool. Praise and worship is saying, God bless you. God bless you, bro. Or sister. Not sure which. Yay or nay is saying, no one understands how much planning or work goes in before you do an excellent live video. Totally. I have fallen on my face. And Beanie, you've seen me. You've seen the streams where the sinks aren't, the, the live streams aren't synced up and it 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 is uh, like choppy. It's happened and I've done it live and I've fallen on my face, but you have to. With live, you have to. Uh, Psych and Stat says, living on the edge has kept me very creative. Me too. Live on the edge. It's a better place to live. Um, Beanie is saying other products to sell, pencil cases, stickers. Dude, do a live stream with your audience and ask them. Like, hey, guys, if I sold products, what what would you want? Um, and you know what you can also do? You can also practice selling stuff for charity. Like, I think a lot of people will buy anything if it's for charity. They'll buy your pencil case and they'll give it to somebody, you know? Um, my kids and I are watching Art for Kids. You guys know the Art for Kids channel? Amazing channel. My kids love it. Um, no, it's not June 1st. Okay, so here's here's what the 01 means, guys. 01 is Owen. Owen video. 01 video, okay? And the June is supposed to 
the goal was to cover that with white paint um, and then to, to have it say video. And because I'm lazy and because I have a full client roster, I haven't done it. So... There. Owen video. That's that's what that is supposed to mean. Oh. Good buddy Jarhead6 is watching. Guys, check out Jarhead's channel. If you're into self-defense, home defense, and uh sort of emergency preparedness, uh, that's good stuff. Beanie is saying I have a new mobile plan, which I can oh yeah, you've got an internet problem there, don't you? Here, let's fix this a little bit. So that's that's what that's supposed to mean right there, you know, um, and that's that's going to help you as well. So, all right, guys, I'm going to get going. Been a pleasure. All right, wait, we got more questions. When is the best time for someone to consider starting to live stream? What I meant by that is, should I wait until I have a larger following? No, um, you will have you will grow your following uh, by uh, you will grow your following by going live. And what I would do, Zach, okay, here, here's a great question. Dr. Sten retracted. Here's a, here's a great thing. You guys that are still growing, you don't have big audiences yet, now is the time to go live. Now is the time. Because no one's going to see you screw up. And the eight people that log in now won't be logging in in five months. That's just the nature of live, right? Uh, if people are into you for a while, then they're out, right? So go live now and learn the breaks, dial it in, learn how it goes, right? And then, you know, you'll grow. And as you grow, you'll grow into a better live stream show. Our, uh, our, our, uh, I sound like an eel, our, 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 our um, live stream, me and Nick, like, you know, I, I really manage that show, okay? And I, I'm responsible for all the newness and the, the, the tech, and, and I have a producer that runs it, but, you know, I'm, I'm the guy in charge of that. Um, when we started, it was very simple. And now we've got sound effects, we have video. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it took us a while to get there, and our first couple really bombed, right? So you have to, you have to build up to that. Um, what else we got? Is it too much to go live every day? Nurture in Christ. Uh, do you have things to talk about every day? Okay. If you're going to go live every day, there has to be a reason. And a news show might be a good reason. You're going to do a news show on, you know, what's happening. So Nurture in Christ, I'm guessing you're a uh, uh, Christian-based show. Um you know, then you're going to want to go live every day with a new Christian topic and you can use the news uh, feeds to trigger what you're going to talk about. If you're going live every day just to grow an audience, I, I just don't think that that's the right thing to do, personally. George Puckett is saying, I'm a writer and I plan to market my books live. Dude, George, great idea. Um, Jarhead, are you still watching? One of my friends I met from Jarhead, Bizza Rizza Gizza, writes these amazing audio books. And then reads them on YouTube. And I could listen to those things for hours. And I have. You could do something like that. You could read a chapter of your book. Um, uh, or just talk about it. Yay or Nay is saying, I did live videos on Giving Tuesday for Monkey Tail Ranch that trains service dogs for autistic kids. Love it. Um, and we made 14K. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, one video. Good. It makes more sense. I just got to get on this stuff. Um, started Instagram, Facebook stories. I am not a believer in Instagram live. Okay. It might go somewhere, um, but I'm not huge uh, with that yet. I think it's getting there though. Yeah. Okay. Beanie has a good point. E for electric. Uh, our good friend Alex streams for about 10 to 15 minutes a day. With daily news. So he does a news show. Uh, you've got to have a reason that you're going going live. So Dr. Stan is saying, I like the live portion after the pre-recorded. Well, we might start doing that, you know. Um, I, I had to quit doing the Monday Night Lives because running that plus my other shows was just too much. It, I mean, honestly, 
you had to make a choice. Um, but I really like kind of this after this after party with you guys. It's it's fun. Um, so that's kind of cool. All right. Any more questions? If you guys have questions, now's the time. Uh, if not, I'm going to hang up and I'm going to go, but I'll hang on for a few more minutes. Uh, see if you guys have any questions. I think I'm going to pull down these lights here. I don't love them. I might put them on the starburst and like outline in the black. Some of these 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 little globe lights here. So we'll see. We'll see about that. I think you guys should be um, uh, definitely using Facebook. I think you guys should definitely be using Facebook. Okay. All right. No more questions are coming in. So I'm going to thank you guys. Mini sermons. Yeah. We do vlogs and talk about how your stuff, about how stuff in our lives and things happening in the world. I think you could definitely do a daily live. You got to have a reason other than I'm just going to go live every day. It's got to be like, hey, daily news and updates so that people get used to, um, uh, you, you know, why you're live every day. And they have a reason to. I want to go see what's going on in Christianity. You know, you know who does this really well is... Um, uh, prophecy news and updates. Um, that, that may not be what you're doing, but they. my wife visits that site almost daily just to see what's going on in the world of prophecy. Okay, guys, I'm uh, uh, a art faux design. If you're not following me, follow me on Facebook. I'd love to follow you guys there. Hey, we're live on Facebook this Wednesday, me and Nick Nim, and we have a radical guest, a guy named Jeff Adams. Check us out, The Business of Video Podcast. I'll put the link there. I'd love for you guys to subscribe to the chat bot, The Business of Video Podcast. If you go to the video uh, business of video podcast.com, click on the button, become a part of the, the momentum there, click a button down there, and you can get uh, my live stream gear guide. I've got all the gear that I use in there. It's just like like nice little nice little bonus. Um and, uh, and we'll check it out. Edwin, I see your question, but we got to go. Uh, so we'll get to it next time. See you guys. I love you. Take care. Have a good night. It's own video.